Hi there and welcome to launch on this Wednesday, November 25th, 2020. We wish to wish a very special person a happy birthday. Our youngest, Faith, turns 22 today. Happy birthday, dear. We love you and God bless you. Let's begin with a question. Jesus told the story of the Good Samaritan in response to a question. What was that question? And now for something funny. A lonesome woman parishioner demanded a home visit from her pastor. So, as promised, he showed up, sat by the woman's bed, listening to her litany of woe. Finally, he asked to read some passages from her Bible. In a much too sweet voice, she called to her little daughter playing in the next room. Darling, please bring mother that dear old book that she reads every night. Promptly, the little girl brought in a copy of a popular TV guide. Oh, busted, right? <laughs> it's important to make time for the Word. We can squeeze other things in too, of course, but hopefully we'll make the Word of God a priority in our lives. That's why we have launch. And now we're going to launch into Mark 5. The passage in its totality is verses 1 through 20, but I'm going to read a portion of that. When Jesus got out of the boat in the region of the Gerasenes, a man with an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. For he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills he would cry out and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the Most High God? In God's name, don't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you impure spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, Send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. He gave them permission, and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs, the herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Mm. We say right away, wow, amazing. This man was not fit to be around, and he knew it. His home was a cemetery. He was unstoppable. until Jesus showed up. When Jesus asked him his name, the man replied, Legion. Now, a Roman legion consisted of between 4,000 and 6,000 men. The man was influenced by or possessed by many, many demonic forces. Mark visits this demon influence or possession thing time and again, showing the importance of the spiritual battle that Jesus was not only waging, but winning. Jesus oddly grants Legion his request, sending the spirits into a herd of pigs which drowned themselves. A lot of people have wondered why. I think there's a couple things here to consider. Number one, this provided visible proof of how many evil forces were at work here. And it may be that there were 2,000 or maybe four or six. There could have been two demonic influences per pig. We don't know. But we do get an idea of just what it is that Jesus was fighting against in this instant. Also, pigs are unclean to Jews. No good Jew would be a pig shepherd. Now it's very possible that this herd of pigs was raised for the benefit of the Greek-influenced Decapolis, which were ten cities that lived in Greek culture. And that would have gotten their attention, which it did, because later in this episode they come out of the town trying to figure out what happened and who it was that healed this man, and 
destroyed the pigs. So it certainly got their attention and they were able to hear even though they begged Jesus to leave because they thought they had met a God. Well, they weren't wrong, were they? They met the God. What an amazing event. Uh, Jesus puts this person on stable ground. The next time he is seen, he is sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed, well-dressed and listening. And he begged Jesus to allow him to go with Jesus and his disciples. And Jesus said, no, go back to the Decapolis, to those cities, and tell them what I have done for you. What a great prescription that is for all of us. Just go tell others what Jesus has done for us. That happened in this case as well. You probably heard of Dr. Robert Schuller, The Hour of Power, The Crystal Cathedral. His teenage daughter, Cindy, was in a motorcycle accident, and he, unfortunately, in, in this accident, she had to have her leg amputated. John Wayne was a big fan of Robert Schuller. He heard Dr. Schuller say on one of his programs that his daughter had been in an accident and had to have her leg amputated. John Wayne wrote a note to her saying, Dear Cindy, sorry to hear about your accident. Hope you will be all right. Signed, John Wayne. The note was delivered to her and she decided she wanted to write John Wayne a note in reply. And this is what she wrote. Dear Mr. Wayne, I got your note. Thanks for writing to me. I like you very much. I am going to be all right because Jesus is going to help me. Mr. Wayne, do you know Jesus? I sure hope you know Jesus, Mr. Wayne, because I cannot imagine heaven being complete without John Wayne being there. I hope, if you don't know Jesus, that you will give your heart to Jesus right now. See you in heaven. And she signed her name. She had just finished writing the letter and sealing it in an envelope and writing across the front of it, John Wayne, when a visitor came into her room to see her, he said to her, what are you doing? She said, I just wrote a letter to John Wayne, but I don't know how to get it to him. He said, that's funny. I'm going to have dinner with John Wayne tonight at the Newport Club down at Newport Beach. Give it to me and I will give it to him. She gave him the letter and he put it in his coat pocket. There were 12 of them that night sitting around the table for dinner. They were laughing and cutting up and the guy happened to reach in his pocket and he felt that letter and remembered. John Wayne was seated at the end of the table and the guy took the letter out and said, Hey Duke, I was in Schuler's daughter's room today and she wrote you a letter and wanted me to give it to you. Here it is. They passed it down to John Wayne and he opened it. They kept on laughing and cutting up and someone happened to look down at John Wayne. He was crying. One of them said, Hey Duke, what's the matter? He said, and can't you hear him saying it in his distinct voice, I want to read you this letter. He read the letter, then he began to weep. He folded it, put it in his pocket, and he pointed to the man who delivered it to him and said, You go tell that little girl that right now, in this restaurant right here, John Wayne gives his heart to Jesus Christ, and I will see her in heaven. Three weeks later, John Wayne died. Wow, again. A little girl's accident, the loss of her leg, a note written, the right visitor who knew where to deliver the note, the note delivered just in time to make a difference for eternity. My goodness, God is amazing. Don't hesitate to tell others, to write others, to show others, whatever the method of delivery, it doesn't matter. Just share. Get out the good news. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this story and for this marvelous event in the life of Christ. Surround us with your protection so that we can win not only the battle on earth, but the battle among spiritual forces. Protect us, guide us, and direct us during these days. Thank you for making us a greater and better people. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Real quick, Jesus told the story of the Good Samaritan in response to a question. What was that question? 
Who is my neighbor? And we find out from Scripture that anyone in need is our neighbor. Take care. God bless. Hope to be with you again soon. Bye-bye.